And hello everybody, Henry here, also known as Zen Video Games. And now for something a little bit different. I recorded this, God, like a year ago, maybe more. Um, I don't know if I can actually record games like this again, but this is Alien Soldier for the Genesis. This game, I believe, was never released in North America. I never played it back in the day. And it's got this great opening. I'll let you read it. Um, I won't be reading it. I kind of find reading things that you can read on yourself on the screen kind of annoying. Although sometimes I do it. But um, there's actually a few versions of this opening and this game. Uh, this one is the first version. It's, uh, it's not as weird as some of the other ones. Um, but this will... Uh, show you something about this game. It's just really interesting. Um, it's actually got some of the best music and graphical effects on the Genesis. It was a very late game in the uh, life cycle of the Genesis. And it's got this crazy sci-fi story at the beginning where it just goes on and on and on and it's all about these psychic um, alien people and a uh, secret society that's going to destroy uh, psychic people on the earth or something like that. Um, this is the, um, the more sane version of it. The other one is more Japanese and it just it's really pretty pretty wild. But here we have Scarlet and Epsilon and um, let's see Z Tiger I believe is another one. I mean was thrown to a space-time continuum which had been activated by Scarlet's use of superpowers. I just love some of the way this is written. Yeah, so this just goes on and on. <laughs> I just recorded this uh, intro and the demos, I believe. An attempt to activate the space-time continuum. Children with superpowers. <laughs> I just love how some of this is written. And they were being held hostage, having been kidnapped. Oh, okay. Can feel the presence. Ah, uh, this Epsilon, right, he's in one of the kids. Yeah, and so this alien is in the kid. He's living as a parasite in him. But the alien parasite in the kid is actually good. He's the one that changes into this bird man. Yeah, most morphed his body into Epsilon. He's a bird man. Stood a bird man with steel wings. But his mind was in conflict. His human nature and the foreign alien force within. <laughs> what a punk. Z Tiger, I will never let you get away. The other one, it's, I will never let you go. It's got all these exclamation points. And then there's another bird man out of nowhere that, oh yeah, you know, they're twins and they're identical and they're very different. The other bird man is evil. But I play as the good bird man, of course. I think we're finally towards the end. Yeah, that's like four minutes of intro, which is unheard of on the Sega Genesis. <laughs> Back in the mid-90s. Just gonna go into the demos here. I'm not playing this. 
This game is actually quite difficult to play. It's not easy. Uh, but it's fun, actually. You get used to it, and you'll get better at it. But initially, it's rather challenging. It's no joke. So there's your Birdman character, and you can choose all these different uh, attacks, and you have all these different moves, which is pretty advanced for a side scroller again. And just this game has some great music. So that gives you an idea what the game's like. You switch between these different weapons, and first you're just attacking regular dudes, and then there's various boss encounters. It's very arcade game-like. This really reminds me of the arcade games from back in the mid-90s. What a great era that was, seriously. Uh, it's too bad arcades are gone. I mean, there's a few, but they're not like they used to be. They're really not. Here we go into another stage demo. Flame Force, Sword Force, Homing Force, all these forces. Pretty cool. I never noticed that before. Let's go. These are pretty advanced visual effects at the time. Especially for the Sega Genesis. Sega Genesis was powerful, but uh, also pretty limited, actually. Had a limited color palette, had limited um, sound capabilities. So to get this kind of fidelity out of it was quite amazing. Like I said, this was a late game in the uh, life of the Genesis. 95, which was pretty late. Um, PlayStation was out by then, I think, or soon to come out. So, uh, most people were already gone from the Genesis. Indeed, I don't think this was released in North America, because in North America, the Genesis was already pretty much over by this time, I believe. I'm not an expert in this, but from what I can remember, and what I know about video game history, I believe that's the case. This did come out in Japan and in Europe. That's why it says this for Mega Drive. That's what the Genesis was called in Europe, the Mega Drive. And, uh... Japan, for that matter. Yeah, for Mega Driver's Custom. <laughs> Such an interesting way to put it. I mean, it's all translated from Japanese with that mid-90s flair where it wasn't quite right. <laughs> Which I find really endearing. I love that. Some of the older games, too, are just terrible with the translations, and they're, they're a lot of fun, too. Okay, so I think this is the last uh, demo part that I recorded.
Yeah, I remember as these demos go on, the player gets worse and worse. I don't know if there's some kind of game over. I love that too. So, see, it's so much like an arcade game. Yeah, this, uh, I was playing this from a ROM, of course, through an emulator, and it uh, gets a little funky there at the end. So, thank you very much for joining me, and I'll see you in other videos. Take care.